All right. I believe we are live. So I'm going to do a few introductions. I am the owner of Section 8 Consulting.com. I work with clients around the nation, uh, 700 to 1,000 a year. I also work with uh, a bunch of landlords. And um, today I wanted to specifically address the Los Angeles Housing Authority and the issue with uh, affordable housing right now. And as many of you know, they had a lottery uh, for Los Angeles or Hakala. And uh, 223,000 people applied for Section 8 vouchers. And as I get into the story, I want to first say that uh, the video is not about a nationwide housing crisis. This video is specifically for those of you that have an interest in low income housing, Section 8, and so on. This is not about market rate uh, or people that have jobs and so on. So if that's any confusion there, this would not be the video for you. If you are going to be a recipient of a voucher or looking at a voucher and uh, dealing with Section 8, then this may be for you. All right, back to that. So 223,000 people applied, which is an extraordinary number. But I think the same thing played out in Miami where uh, 90,000 applied. And that city is the only fraction of L.A. And let me recognize a few people, uh, Shirley Bryant and uh, Trish Knowles. How are you all this afternoon? And by the way, may I say happy holidays. Uh, this video is made in December 2022. And uh, Santa Claus is coming. For those that don't believe, then I guess cold weather is coming. Now, getting back, uh, the 230, uh, 223,000 people, I want to show you some interesting statistics. And I won't be able to show it to you as a live video, but I can tell it to you. 30,000 people were awarded vouchers. The position of the uh, Housing Authority for Los Angeles is very much to address homelessness. And a big portion of those vouchers were vouchers to those that were homeless and uh, potentially imminently homeless means they're almost losing their place to live. The coincidence, the very real coincidence of all of this is that, do you know what's fixing to happen in January? Does anybody know? Well, in January, we will see the largest segments of evictions related to the pandemic happening. And the estimated number is, guess what? 30,000 or more. 30,000 people are going to be losing their protections against uh, eviction. And so we're going to see the biggest wave of evictions LA has ever seen. And so now you're starting to understand the, the positioning and timing of uh, the Los Angeles Housing Authority issuing, issuing 30,000 vouchers. Let me tell you why all of this is just very bad. Number one, issuing 30,000 vouchers in a market like LA is a mistake. Uh, because, there, first of all, there's not 30,000 houses to use, which means, in my opinion, and this is strictly my opinion, based on my own data and research, that probably around 25,000 people are just received a worthless voucher. I honestly do not see more than 5,000 people being able to utilize these vouchers for a variety of reasons. Also, because the vouchers, the rent reasonableness for them, probably will not reach the amount that's required to actually rent most properties. The vast majority that are vouchers that have people that receive the vouchers are homeless and don't even have jobs or very low owners and would probably would not be able to utilize it the way they would like. Let me tell you a very ugly statistic behind this. So you've got all these vouchers, right? We just flooded the market. We already have a housing market that's insane out there in LA. And so we take a market that it's uh, not enough housing, never has been, but now it's a super issue of unaffordable housing, too high rents. And then we flood the market with vouchers that will likely be worthless. But there's good news in the story, okay? So just wait, be patient. So what I want to say about this is I only really estimate that probably five to 10,000 people will likely find housing. And that's likely to coincide with all the evictions, which means these landlords are likely going to be on the hunt uh, for vouchers or people that have jobs. So that does open up opportunities. So there's no coincidence here. This was all very much time. Pushing out this many vouchers at one time, this is why I'm against housing authorities issuing massive waves of vouchers. Because most of these vouchers are going to be worthless. There's not enough housing. We could have been issuing a thousand vouchers a month and keeping the list open for the most part year round rather than being stupid and trying to do them all at one time like this. 
It's too much. It's going to flood the market, and a lot of people just aren't going to get what they need. So what what should you do if you're one of the lucky persons that got that thirty one of those thirty thousand vouchers? My advice to you is if you don't have you you don't need a support system and family or you don't have family or friends and so on in L.A. I would say to you that there is one big positive. I would take that voucher and I would port it out of L.A. I would port it. It's called portabilities of moves. I would take that voucher and land in another county or another state. And why do I suggest that? L.A. and New York, one, have some of the most powerful vouchers, in my opinion. They're worth more. It's a very rare occasion that housing authorities in other parts of the nation or in other counties across uh, California would reject a voucher coming out of L.A. simply because of the value of it. Now, imagine you live in a little town like where I grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a little Cajun town. And you got little shotgun houses and rents 500. The voucher's pretty worthless. Do you think Do you think somewhere like L.A. or New York or what do you want to fool with a voucher being ported to them from a little city like that? Hell no. So the value of the voucher is actually worth something, just not in L.A. So for those of you that can't get it done, then I would suggest to you to take that voucher, port it to the nearest county. San Diego's doing a good job. Might, not, might be the time to move. You might have to get on the tram or whatever it is out in L.A., and just go see family when you can, because losing that voucher is a bad idea. They're so hard to get. And if you if you want a voucher in L.A., uh, I've got to tell you, that's really like winning, winning the lottery. Uh, it's so rare to even get the damn things. I'm going to address a few comments, and then I'm going to give some more of my wonderful opinions. Uh, Trish Null says, thank you for being so supportive and caring for me and everyone you help. Good Redmond, sounds like there'll be enough housing coming available after evictions, right? Well, evictions are court cases and judges and hearings, and that can drag on for eight months. So though there's a big wave of evictions, it doesn't mean that that's going to close those evictions out. And so, you know, the close, the longest I've seen that you can drag this out, uh, uh, where you can do a housing search is anywhere from a month to six months. That's how long you can potentially keep messing around and not actually use the voucher is up to six months, potentially. In most cases, about 30 to 60 days. Uh, I'm going to address a few more comments and then we're going to move on to the content. Uh, Dues says, excellent. Thank you for sharing, Jay. Miss 702, I'm coming to eat crayfish with you and the cats. We'd very much like that. I'm, a, I'm what you call a Cajun cowboy, so I'm from Louisiana, but I've spent most of my life in Texas, so we uh, celebrate a little bit of both. And the last comment that I wanted to address is PETA. Minnesota is horrible. We take uh, any and everyone in besides the locals. Well, that is the methodology for most housing authorities. Uh, so, yeah. So back to that 30,000 eviction wave. 30,000 being evicted, 30,000 vouchers issued, more, probably more than half the homeless people that can barely use them in an economy. So I would say at a pair of estimates, five to 10,000 vouchers possibly being able to be used in LA and the suggestion that a lot of you port those vouchers out to other areas and just create a different life somewhere else. Uh, whether it's the surrounding uh, the LA area, LA Orange, or or in another state, this is your shot. Uh, the LA vouchers are definitely uh, more favored than most uh, in the country. Um, <clears throat> now on to the housing crisis. Let's talk about that very simply. A housing crisis is when we have an overheated market with inflation and then we drop the interest rates to zero, thus taking the rich to buy up all the houses around California and then owning the property and then jacking the rent simply because you can. Now, when the country does it, we call it inflation. When two humans, when the landlord screws the tenant or the tenant screws the landlord, that's called price gouging, okay? We just give it a prettier name when the nation doesn't. That's the reality. People are raising prices simply because they can. The price of the egg hasn't really changed. It's some, but not to the degree of which we're changing. So that requires the tenant to have their rent reasonableness readjusted and praying that FMRs or fair market rates, the immediate homes, are they being rented for the same value as what you're asking? Does the market support that? And unfortunately, I like it's not. Uh, so I have to warn you guys. Um, <clears throat> now is the time to consider taking that nice, lovely voucher before it expires and just taking it somewhere else. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have a, a way into a property and it isn't way overvalued in terms of rent, 
and you believe your voucher can be used and do it. But there are 230,000 people looking to rent the same 5,000 houses that are left on the market at high inflation. So I think it's a bit bad that we're handing out all those vouchers and we know that they're not worth anything. It looks good for them. Oh, well, we're doing a fabulous job over here at Los Angeles Housing Authority. We just issued 30,000 vouchers. Now we've got these wonderful, beautiful numbers, uh, but they don't love to tell the other half the story about how half these homeless people have given them to that can't even hold down a McDonald's job because of all kinds of issues. Okay, disability, whatever. It's not intended to insult anybody, but can't hold down. So these vouchers will just simply be fed back. So I, I would expect that there'll be the largest refund of vouchers in American history in the next 60 days as well. Will that open up uh, all those houses? Likely. But landlords are on shaky grounds as it is. Now let's talk about the ugly of all this. If, if you've got a limited number of houses left, you've got a pool that's 20 times more than the available housing, then what does the landlord do? Did we talk about the nation have an inflation and then if a person one person screws another person then we call that price gouging right so what happens when the landlord sees that they have a limited property in a limited market that means they have the option to do what discriminate it's very clear and in your face so they can go through that list of 200 they can go through that list of 30,000 voucher holders and they can pull out everybody they can start looking at everybody's credit. Okay, well, who are the 30 people we can put in this property that all have 800 or better credit scores? Who in this group of 30,000 people, after we eliminate everybody from the low end of it, how many of them have both a voucher and a social security check? And that way we're guaranteed run. Now, do you see how this goes badly? So we have 5,000 landlords, 5,000 houses, 30,000 and uh, vouchers. But now we're going to discriminate down to who's got the better. We're going to keep interviewing everybody until we find some. We're going to find the back build the building with people with the very highest credit scores, with the very highest income limits that don't time out. So now you see what the problem is. So that means that even the five thousand under are under a limit, and that those landlords could potentially keep running applications until they find a person with the highest known credit score in the state of California that still meets the requirement to be on a voucher. Discrimination inside of discrimination inside of discrimination versus all the laws in which a bunch of low-income people which have vouchers that do not have $300, $400 an hour to pay a law firm to figure out while they're living in a tent on a sidewalk under a bridge. So how do I think all this is really going to go for most people? I think the excitement will happen, then the tears, and then you either pour it or you lose it. So I'm going to give you some advice, guys. If you don't know what to do or you're looking for a different solution and you've got an exploding voucher in LA and you know you really don't have a chance at telling using it, you've confirmed that, you've given your best effort, and you've done it in a magnum amount of time, 30 or 60 days, I would say reach out to a consultant. It doesn't have to be me or my company. Reach out to somebody that knows better than you because you don't have that much time once you receive that to be able to utilize it. And if they tell you, let's be clear about something. It's not in the interest of housing authorities to tell you the whole truth. They're required to tell you the truth, but never the whole. So if they tell you, hey, you know what? Here's a voucher. You got 30 days to use it. But they didn't include the words, but if you have this medical reason or you have that reason or this reason, some of the six known reasons, then you could extend that voucher for more months or even up to half a year, but they're not going to include it because then everybody would want to do it. It's my job to know that. It's my job to tell my clients that. So if your best efforts fail, then maybe it's time to get with somebody that understands. And as much as I would like to be the free information line to directly connect my phone into 211 and do all this for free, it would mean that I would have to live on the street in order to operate my own business. So there, there's not a lot of great options, but there are, there can be good decisions. And I think good decisions is if you can't utilize that voucher in 30 days and you need to make an immediate move to get that voucher out of the control of that Los Angeles housing or begin portability and shoot that thing somewhere else. If you shoot it somewhere else, the clock starts again. 
technically, if you do it right, you can keep resetting that clock. Now, is it your problem that they left a gaping loophole into this deal? Well, it's not. But it's my job to understand that. So now you're starting to see and understand the value of knowing somebody that does consulting work because it's my job to reverse engineer everything and understand the many different ways it could be used. And unless Congress is going to go and hold legislation again and change these rules, we'll continue to walk clients right through them. So that's my opinion and worth whatever it's worth after 22 years and 18,000 clients. Is it worth its weight and salt? Well, that's up to you. But I've seen these scenarios play out through New York, LA, Florida, Miami. I don't really need much more proper education, experimentation, market research, reading data manuals, operation manuals, policies, and procedures to tell you pretty much how this is going to play out. The question is, is will you be a victim of it or will you get what you need done? That's all I can say, you know. Of course, I want everybody to get what they need, but you have to be able to substantiate the extraordinary costs and rents in L.A. and Orange, and it may not just be the best option for you. But at least that voucher's worth something, and I would definitely drag it with me wherever I go. All right, let's take a look back and take a look at these comments here. <clears throat> Minnesota's horrible. We take any and everyone besides the locals. I think I commented on that one. And Peter also goes on to say, thank you for always giving us free game on the housing tip. Well, you know, guys, it's consulting. I don't know if it's tips and tricks. Tips and tricks are more what other people do in channels. They don't have any formal education or experience in this. Uh, Sheila Neal, hello everyone. Good afternoon to you. Good Redmond. Hi, Sheila. Sheila goes on to say hello, Miss 72. Is it even possible to stay in California at this point? Look, guys, in the next 10 years, it's going to be nearly impossible for anybody that doesn't make 70000 a year as a low income person to even exist in that state. And the closer you are to LA, the worse it's going to get. We're already seeing Florida begin the process that California went through a long time ago. Too many people, too many people retiring, too many disabled, too many old folks on the beach. It's not a problem. With it. Again, don't misinterpret my con conversation in relation to seniors and disabilities. What I'm saying is what we already seen go through California is going to happen to Florida. It already is. And eventually that claim and accusation can also be counted towards the great state of Texas. Okay. So I would say that, yeah, it's becoming impossible over there unless you make an extraordinary income and you would need to be able to maintain it. And in a tight market like that, for any reason, including coughing the wrong way in front of that landlord, they would have a reason to not, um, in my opinion, well, it's not even an opinion, really. Uh, I would say that any reason to not renew a lease, and there's no law that a landlord has to renew a lease. The reason I'm bringing up non-renewals is it's the legal way for people to get rid of you in a market where it would be next to impossible to move your entire apartment, have the money to do so, find another place, and then do it in the ridiculous amount of time they're giving you to do it. So you're always in jeopardy and peril. Why even live? And again, I have nothing against California, but why even live there? Who would want to live under those conditions? Uh, where you can be put out, non-renewed, and then you face a market that's next to impossible. Or you have to pay out just about everything. That the, Even the voucher can't even keep up with that kind of rent. This explosive market, I hope, in many respects, will come back to earth in the next couple of years. But until then, it's going gonna, it's gonna to remain in a pretty dangerous position. And it isn't going to matter how many vouchers they throw at it. And let me tell you something, dumping 30,000 vouchers into Los Angeles is as stupid as it ever gets. These people, again, should have been issuing these every month. They can't even support a quarter of those vouchers. I mean, you got a bunch of people wandering around in the street looking for housing that's simply not there. We didn't have 30,000 houses to rent before the pandemic. Who's stupid? And you know the profanity is I want to use, but I'm not going to. Whose idea was that? How, how is that going to do that? And given people that clearly are suffering from a mental health crisis that don't know whether it's night or day or what time of day it is, handing out vouchers just so you can look good on a score sheet for, for political purposes to show that you've done something but you really haven't is, is about the most unethical thing I've seen in a while. I mean, does nobody else see what I see with all this and how it's playing out? 
All right, I'm going to take a sip of coffee. It's really killing me. But, you know, I've been trying to use less profanity in my videos. Most of you know that I'm a pretty broad guy, and I'm, I'm a big believer in using profanities here and there. Not not because there's a nature of religion and all that, but it's just that it, 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 it really does show the true intent or the intensity of the topic of the conversation. Uh, people listen harder when you start using a few bad words. And so I've definitely elected to do that in a few videos here and there. But the YouTube gods don't like that as much. So I'm trying to keep it as... Uh, as, as Christian as I can or Buddhist as I can or without profanities. <laughs> All right, so going back on, there's a few comments here. Miss 707, uh, Sheila Neal goes on, question, what's going on with the Florida housing? Well, the Florida housing market is sinking bad. Uh, the rents are extraordinary, and a lot of the seniors are being aged out of all the communities, and there's virtually no vouchers in the state of Florida. Florida was a problem even at the beginning of the pandemic. Matter of fact, when people call me about Florida and getting them housing or a voucher, I cringe because I already know we're going to have to probably call every housing authority in the whole northern state of Florida. Uh, again, a lack of affordability, not enough housing, and too many damn people. 32 million people in the sandbar. How long did we think we were going to be able to dump seniors into a state? How many decades were going to continue to put a bunch of people that are no longer working and no longer earning and paying tax in the state, how long before we thought that sandbar, Florida, was going to implode? And now the rents are out of everybody's reach for a lot of people out there. Let me give you a prime example. Miami, they ran their list, that little lottery, right? Here's when you know you've got problems. You run a lottery and say you got about 6 to 8% of the people apply for a voucher, okay? 6% of that population. Do you know what percentage of the people in the uh, city of Miami applied? Out of 400,000 people, one quarter, 25% of the population applied. That's a big problem. Okay? That is a monstrous problem. That's 90,000 people. That's almost half as much as what just happened in L.A. And it's little bitty Miami. Miami's well known, but it's not big. It's a population of 400,000, 90,000. That's a serious problem. That's one quarter of the population. And that's just one of the destinations out there in the uh, state of Florida. And conceivably, it's getting tougher and tougher. A lot of clients are moving into counties and, and places in the interior of Florida I've never even heard of. Looking for, and a lot, you know what? I get a lot of seniors call, call me about Florida and they want to go live out. Oh, yeah, let me, can I get a voucher and go live in South Beach? Yeah, right. Okay, sure. Or they pick some place where the mansions are 45 million a piece with a yacht. Do you think I can get a little college? A cottage where I can walk out my front door and put my toes in the ocean. And I'm just like, this is delusional. Uh, Florida's just simply got no tax base because too many seniors are retired. And there's not enough housing. And again, that's speculation and opinions on my part. But I think if I'm running 700 to an eight, 700 to 1,000 clients a year, roughly at 80% of being seniors, I think I know what I'm talking about. And if I am the best and most well-known consultant in the nation when it comes to Section 8 across Google and YouTube, then I think I've got a firm grasp on it. I mean, I, I may not have a PhD in, in housing and market statistics, but I think that by virtue of clients, I do understand the market um, in a small way uh, when it comes to Section 8. All right, moving back down, uh, looks like PETA, Sebo, one way of legally getting rid of... Uh, Rid, rid of you is not by getting lease renewed versus the well you know there had to be a legal way for landlords to get rid of tenants they don't like so they gave them one one option where you can get rid of anybody there had to be a way out that's only fair and non-renewable lease doesn't require any fucking i'm sorry any reason okay and so that's an opportunity where no laws can be used against the landlord. If the landlord decides that they don't want to renew, then you can't claim, you can't cry any discrimination, none of it. This means no renewal. That's just gives a landlord one fighting chance. Um, Good Redmond says, uh, I lived a couple places in the last two years. They didn't renew the lease, claimed they wanted to sell the house. So I'm going to tell you about what that really is, okay? So you guys kind of get the idea of why landlords don't renew. And it's not as linear and as logical as many of you might imagine. 
The most common reason why a landlord will renew is because very few of them understand that they can ask for a rent increase. A lot of them don't know that. So what they're doing is by not renewing is they're, what they're doing is they're rehab. They're getting a new request for tenancy so they can get a higher rent. It's easier to do that than it is for them to wait an annual one year to ask for the increase. And a lot of them don't know how to do it. So they just get rid of the tenants and they start fresh with a higher fair market rate. That's the reason why. The other reason is the obvious reason. They just don't like you for a lot of reasons. And to be fair, uh, the non-renewals is a fair and even way for landlords. To get, look, if I was renting a property, whether whether as long as it's not prejudicial, and I just decided I really just don't like you, then I should have the I should have at least one fair way to get rid of you. Okay, I just don't want you there. I've decided you you talk too much, your dog barks too much. Maybe I just don't want you on my property. That's it. So there has to be some fair way out for the landlord, and that is the one way they give a landlord to do it. All right, moving on. Uh, Miss 702, Texas is too full. I don't believe so. First of all, Texas is not going through a housing crisis for the most part. We have four of the largest city in the top 10 in America. You've got Houston, you got Dallas, you got Fort Worth, and you got Austin. Okay. And even our suburbs are a million. So all these big counties are not crunched by housing, uh, a housing crisis for the most part. Uh, we have some of the highest employment rates, though they don't pay shit out here, just to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but you apply in Houston, you've got eight surrounding counties, each one with a million or more people in it. Or you go to Houston, uh, Dallas, and you uh, you drive 30 minutes, about 40 minutes, and then you hit Fort Worth with another eight million people. So what it does is you have high concentrations of housing authorities and vouchers and a lack of, nut, of a nutty market like California and L.A., L.A. is concentrated in one little old place. At least this way, you have the trifecta. You know, down here is the uh, Houston. Dallas is up here. Austin here. Four-hour range. And you've got, you know, 12, 12 to 20 million people. And you got all the, all the counties that surround each one of those big old cities, all of which rank in the top 10 in the U.S. for population. So... Is there a lot of people out there? Absolutely. It's a big city. It's supposed to be. But it's not like New York or L.A. where you're actually trying to rent people broom closets for $4,000 a month. It hasn't come to that. Texas has got a lot of land. You know, we're not limited. Texas is huge. So I have to I have to say we'll disagree on that. Uh, Hot Lips. I like that. First interesting name of the day. Hey, big boy, I've been looking for you. All right, Hot Lips. I have a feeling that that might be a bot and, uh, or, you know, when uh, these chats live, we get a lot of Russians selling blow up dolls and medications and everything. So um, the verdict is out of hot lips here. Uh, just said, Hey boy, I've been looking for you. I, I think that is likely a bot. I don't think that's a real person, but we'll give, we'll give our Russian or Asian uh, algorithm selling uh, blow up dolls in the channel or live chat right we'll give her a chance just in case it's a real person all right moving on lisa neal you are correct and that's ridiculous i applied in miami and miami beach and different counties in florida and nothing yet that's no no shock there and with quarter of the population with virtually no housing to give you're right pita about your for housing housing boats sounds awesome you know, going back to LA, if we here's another issue I see. They've got a lot of zoning laws that favor the uh, people that are extraordinarily rich in LA, okay? And these zoning laws prevent multifamily uh, all around all the transportation centers where low income people utilize. And it eats up a massive chunk. If they were to release and change those zoning laws, that could allow a developer to come in and do it. But I think the greed has taken over. Has anybody gone to shop online at Macy's or Sears or the few stores left and discovered that the same item a year ago, now it's three times more? So greed's kicked in and everybody's just charged as much as they can because they can. It's a gold pot run to see how much if we can actually send the whole nation into a recession by inflating everything. Everything is nuts now. I make a decent amount of money, and I was stunned so badly. Uh, I spent $150 at Walmart. 
and the buggy was empty. It was empty. It was offending. Uh, some of the prices were just like somebody thought to themselves, you know what? I'm just going to charge, just keep raising the price and seeing just how desperate anybody is to buy my product. I'm just going to raise it to the skyline and see if I can get people buying. And that's everything in the aisles now. Everything's nuts. We got people selling Christmas bulbs for $20. Okay. Three years ago, you'd have bought a box of bulbs, glass ones. Now they're $20 a piece in some places. So it's just crazy. Uh, <clears throat> Azam, Mr. and Mrs. Azam, is this allowed? Well, of course things aren't allowed, but who's going to fight it? How many people do you know on a fixed income are going to run down to the law firm and go ahead and put down a $10,000 deposit, spend the next six years of their life in state or Supreme Court, uh, and then uh, lawyer up, sell all their goods, move under the bridge, and wait for a verdict? That's the problem. The system is already jerry-rigged. Okay. Uh, Peter Sub goes on. Yes, yes, I have. I have, and their stuff is made in China. Yep, you're right about that. Even the Chinese are on the game now. They're now charging. So now they're selling this. And I don't want to offend any Chinese American, but let's people that Americans want products made cheap. We've taught the Chinese now to drop the price so they can make as much profit. That's what Americans do. We want to make money. So we've actually created our own junk wars. Our need to be able to sell the product to make lots of money, force the Chinese to make them things cheaper and cheaper till it's trash. And now we bitch about the stuff that's trash. But that's the life of it. Now we're selling trash for big dollars. Anybody been on overstock? Look, you'd have to be independently wealthy. These people are selling uh, the skirts that you put under your tree for $80. $80. This is not... A Calvin Klein dress, $80 for the Christmas skirt. You want a little bulb you bought? Remember grandma's glass bulbs? One bulb starting at 14 bucks. See, I want to use profanities, but I'm trying not to. So in order to do your tree, you need $5,000 if you want it in glass. So if we want a capitalism, well, we got it, baby. And now even on eBay, everybody's going nuts Let's just charge what we can. Anybody, just triple, triple, dipple, triple the triple. You know? So we create our own shortages, and then everybody buys up products to, to further inflate it. That's why you can't even buy an Xbox or a PS4. People paying two grand for something to 600 How stupid is that? Remember the toilet paper run? Building warehouse with toilet paper? This, this is what we do. This is what Americans do. You got to love it. So... In closing this video, now that I've gone on my tirade and gone way off track from Section 8, let me say this, guys. If you got a voucher, use it. If you can't use it quickly, port it, port it out of there before you lose it. Use it or lose it, you're going to get in trouble with that, okay? Those things in L.A. is one of the toughest markets to get them. Second thing I advise for you is if what you're doing is not working and you, you tried your best, then maybe it's time to ask help from somebody else. Now, there's lots of free help in the planet. You can call uh, HUD's main office, and they can allocate a few minutes to you. You can call the housing authority, and they'll return your call sometime this year, and they'll give you a minute or two before they giggle and hang up. You can call 211 and talk to people there, and uh, they'll do a quick Google search and then giggle and hang up. Uh, all excellent free options. If you're tired of free options, if people, it may work with somebody that's been in the market for a long time, then it may be an option. But again, it's certainly, I'm not here to sell you anything. I think that it, enough pain and misery, you'll get tired and you'll come back around and figure it out. We're closing this, guys. I'm going to put up uh, a couple links. You'll check me out if you like. Uh, it's company information. Fully licensed, registered, Secretary of State, filings, federal filings, and all that good stuff. Y'all check it out. That's only if you need help. Nobody's suggesting you need to spend one copper penny doing anything. You do not have to pay anybody anything to consult or do anything for you. This is only for those that have done their best efforts and they're running out of options, okay? So I don't want anybody to feel compelled to spend one copper penny. You can just as easily lose the voucher. They Look, they're having a tent sale on Skid Row. You get a hot deal, you get a free roll of socks, and they'll come feed you, feed you meal on wheels. 
all and look that free advice is exactly where to land you. <clears throat> and good Redmond says, say no to toilet paper, birthday all the way. You know, some little jerk back early pandemic bought a whole warehouse of toilet paper. You know, that little beep is actually sitting there at that warehouse of toilet paper, and now it ain't worth a nickel. I'm so happy he's stuck with that. Good Redman says, bit, uh, bit it. Peter says, thank you so much for sharing. Love your content. See you later. Keep us posted. All right, guys. So the last thing I want to tell you is um, our Kiki, and as many of you know, I incorporate my cats in my videos as much as I can. So Miss Chi-Chi, the pregnant Piedmont took in, and as many of you know, I have an extraordinary number of cats, all of which are rescues, and uh, her pregnancy is coming around soon, and uh, I'll let you all see the Kikis and uh, probably be looking for homes after they're safe and so we're looking forward to it. I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, these will be Christmas kittens. We'll see. You know, I have an affinity for cats. I don't have any dogs because dogs and cats don't mix when you got this many cats. So we're waiting to post updates about that. If you're a pet lover, you'll quite enjoy me. I mean, I have an extraordinary uh, amount of time and love for cats uh, and other animals. And uh, I think what many of us share that, share that much. And uh, I quite enjoy posting a lot about that on the channel. We can't just sit here and talk about Section 8, you know. <laughs> oh, so the comments start. I knew if I started talking about cats, you guys would start commenting. I love your cats. Yes, congrats. Brandy Clark goes, my daughter wants to foster kittens and a mama cats. Well, Brandy, you've got a good daughter. You raised her well. And uh, I'm glad to hear that. Stephen Rapoli, my cats are Oliver and, and Grey Girl. Excellent. We're going to put up, when the kittens come, I'm going to do a live video with a little bit of kittens, and we're going to give them some uh, nice names. Uh, Dawn Robin. Well, actually, we're going to put up for vote uh, for you guys to choose the names of the kittens. Let's see. Rob, uh, Dawn Robin says, how is your Christmas tree holding up? So my Christmas tree has half the bulbs on there. Uh, we took a lot of care to put the wire on the bulbs because the kittens we have here already, uh, we've only broke two bulbs so far. Now, how do you train your cats not to decimate all your glass bulbs on your Christmas tree? You put the tree up in October. You get them used to the concept of the tree. So they've climbed all up and in it, knocked a lot of the flocking out of it. And now that they're used to it, it becomes something uninteresting. So now they only occasionally break a bulb. So I've allotted a 3% loss ratio, as funny as that sounds, which means I'm willing to lose 3% of all my glass bulbs to incidents. Look. My cats are more important than anything that I own. Just like you and your children and your pets, I value that. I knew the cost. I knew the cost involved with having these pets from the beginning. I'm not going to spam or torture or anything else my cats over bullshit that you can buy for. You can't ever re replace the value of life. You can only and that is the cost of business. You want to own pets, then you have to accept some of the things that they do. When you have as many as me, then that's a given. So I budget yearly that this much stuff's going to get destroyed, and I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I accept that, okay? All right, uh, Brandy Clark, yes, we do. And she says, thank you. Michelle Jackson, thank you for what you do. Brandy's laughing at me. Uh, Michelle Jackson from Connecticut. Wow, you're out there a minute. Don't have a lot of Connecticut clients. Connecticut uh, apparently solved their own issues. Oh, by the way, let me make up an issue about Connecticut real quick. Now, we're, if that's what that means, CT. Connecticut issued a bunch of vouchers over there. Do you know over half of them are unused? Do you see a parallel with LA now? So you have a housing authority that looked beautiful. They like to show beautiful numbers to their board members. Oh, we issued all these vouchers. We're saving the planet, but it really is the biggest scam on the planet. You don't issue that many vouchers on a market that can't support it. So it looks it looks lovely for the shareholders and the board members, but the reality is it's just a big hustle. These housing authorities need to be opened every single month and issuing vouchers and stop this nonsense issuing a million at a time. LA's market can't support it, neither could Connecticut. But that's the game they play because it looks good on paperwork. It looks good to the mayor. That way you can give the little asshole working over the housing authority the golden key to the city because all their numbers and their demographics look beautiful on paper, but the reality of it is they're scrubbing everybody with that junk. 
when you'll see how this is going to play out in LA, you're going to have a bunch of people wandering around like zombies with vouchers and nowhere to use them. And even the ones that managed to find a place to rent are going to be in the moon. So you can actually go down to Lowe's, give them a thousand dollars and assemble a shed out, out in somebody's yard. And then maybe they'll let you rent that. You stick a toilet and shower in there. By the way, I do have one landlord. I'm going to bring this up and, uh, I'm going to make a video part. I have a landlord right now in LA. She has a house. She wants to rent. I'm going to make a video. And uh, anybody that's interested in that house in LA can certainly apply for it. Now, I've got to finish the paperwork with her tomorrow. She had two houses. Now, she's down to one. I put it out there. And I told her, I said, don't be stunned if you have 10,000 applicants. Okay? And I'll be presiding over that. I have a lot of landlords in LA for those that know Orange and many, many counties most of which are full, okay? But if you're in the L.A. area, uh, there are some landlords I'm still working with that have a few open properties, but it's far and in between. <laughs> Hot Lips says, bunch of scrubs. All right, so we know Hot Lips is real and, and not actually selling blow-up dolls from Russia. That's a good deal, Hot Lips. All right, Don Robin, uh, renovate abandoned buildings. Possibility. And one other thing about Los Angeles right now, they are ending the homeless program. Coincidental again, 30,000 evictions. Then we give out 30,000 vouchers. And coincidentally, we're fixing to boot every homeless person that they have what they call Project Hotel Key. So all these homeless people have been living in these hotels as a form of housing are now going to be part kicked out. Coincidental in the timing? No, nah. This is all planned. This is planned with cigars, fine champagne, and everything else. You just have to go politically to the offices while they sit around under the chandelier and decide the fate of everybody that doesn't have a lot of money. This is politics, and this is about as motivated as it gets. All this shit was timed perfectly. And why, why, why hold a, why give out thirty thousand vouchers in the middle of December? Because they knew the market peak was at its lowest. In other words, the lowest number of people would likely enter the market in December. So all this was grandiose from the beginning. And I warned a lot of our clients that uh, have cases with us. I said, look, don't hang your hat on getting one of these vouchers. Don't do it. Because even if you got it, it's a hot mess. Uh, Don Robin, Brandy Clark. That's how it was when I came to Los Angeles with my voucher. I believe it. I believe it. Michelle Jackson's going to hand up. Don, Don Robbins crying with tears. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. I really enjoyed talking with you guys. Uh, our next uh, video will be a little bit about that L.A. property for those that might be interested in that. I think it's three-bedroom, one-bath, pretty nice house, drive, driveway, and all that good stuff. I don't even know what the rent is yet. I'm still working on those details. And then I think we're going to talk about some disability rights again because I think that we need to discuss more modifications and um, – one thing I really want to cover that I've never covered is HUD bash for veterans. If you are a veteran, we're making a video about that. It's highly complex. Uh, the operational manuals and uh, the federal titles that fund that program are complex. That's why I've never, ever made that. But I believe that it's time to make the video, even if it's not going to be wildly popular. I'm going to assist you veterans, former and current, in this housing market. And I'm going to help you fundamentally understand every aspect of it that way when you seek a voucher you'll know more than a person actually trying to issue it to you knowledge is power in this game and if you don't know then you're just going to be victimized by the same people that will probably put in charge to help you it's an unfortunate consequence of this program and this federal program is a lot of people just get victimized because they're not unilaterally apprised of their rights federal rights state rights county rights and they don't know how to react so they become in servitude to the very people that should have cared or gave a damn. Giving a damn is pretty much my job. It's not theirs. All right, guys, I've enjoyed it. I'm hoping y'all are enjoying your holiday time, and we're looking forward to a bunch of cool videos that are coming out. Kittens, Veterans, and Disabilities. That's probably what I'll name the next one. Steve Bropoli, HUD Bash, had a change with HUD, DOJ, over the home ownership program in San Francisco. I'd like to look into that, Mr. Rapoli, or Mr. and Mrs. Rapoli, and uh, see, what, see what you're talking about. All right, guys, let me shut it down. Have a great day. Bye-bye.